The story takes place in 2010 in Kagane, western Tokyo, and revolves around a group of little people who are 10 centimeters tall and live beneath the floorboards of a typical human household, as does the novel. Sho, a boy, arrives at the house where his mother lived as a child to stay with his great aunt Sadako. When Sho gets out of the car, he notices a cat attacking something in the bushes, but the cat flees after being attacked by a crow. Sho investigates what the cat was attempting to attack. He then sees, or thinks he sees, a little person, a borrower named Arietti. Ariety dashes back to the basement before the cat arrives with flowers and leaves for her mother. Her worried mother asks Ariety if she went outside again, but she is surprised to discover that her room has turned into a small forest full of leaves and flowers. As an early birthday present, Ariety gives the leaves to her mother. Homily reminds her daughter that she should avoid human beings because their uncle was killed by one. If Ariety is concerned, she can keep the gift, but Homily says she will keep it because she has a recipe for the leaves she can use. Ariety is excited because she is to go on her first borrowing tonight. She tells her mother that she's been preparing for the borrowing for so long. Later at night, when her father returns home she asks him if she can go with him for borrowing. When her father Pod returns and informs them that there is a new being in the house, Homily is hesitant to let her daughter go, especially since children are unpredictable, but Ariety wants to go because they promised her that this would be her night. Pod allows her to come because Sho is sick and she'll be fine, before leaving to get ready, Ariety assures her mother that she'll look after her father. Pod informs Homily that Ariety is nearly 14 and will be on her own soon. Homily asks them to bring some sugar and tissue for tea. Pod and Ariety cross a bridge made of nails used by human beings and carefully get inside the house. Pod takes Ariety above the floorboards that night to show her how he gets sugar. Their first stop is the kitchen, followed by a walk through a wall to a dollhouse in Sho's bedroom to obtain tissue. Despite the fact that Ariety is in awe of everything, Pod tells her that these are not things to borrow, despite the fact that everything is perfect for them, but Pod reminds her that borrowers take only what they need. Ariety is surprised to see the dresser in the dollhouse and she expresses her wish to live in such a house one day. Pod tells her that they can only borrow things that human beings will not notice and can't risk their existence. Before Ariety and Pod can leave with the tissue, Ariety notices Sho is awake and drops the sugar cube they received. Sho tells them not to be afraid of him, but as they leave, Sho remarks that he has heard of them before. When they arrive in the cellar, Ariety admits to her father that the boy may have seen her in the garden today, but Pod assures her that everything will be fine and that she made the right decision by not running or panicking in the bedroom. Before leaving Ariety finds a pin and keeps it as her first borrowing. Pod also warns her about the rats in the house and tells her that they can cause trouble. Back at home, Homily asks them how did the borrowing go but Pod claims that the light went out and they didn't get anything. Arietti proudly displays the pin she received to her mother. The next day, Sho leaves the dropped sugar cube along with a note beside an underground air vent where he first saw Arietti. But Arietti's mother Homily is shocked when Arietti tells her she dropped the sugar, and Pod warns them not to take it because their existence must be kept hidden from humans. Her mom and dad are really disappointed with her and they make a decision to move away from the place and find a new home. After doing laundry, Variety notices the ants stealing the sugar, she shoos them away, and notices that Sho left a note, indicating that he saw her. The note said, you forgot something, referring to the sugar cube. So, while her family is busy, Ariety sneaks out to visit Sho in his bedroom. Ariety throws the remaining sugar cube in Sho's bedroom and then he notices her shadow on his window and asks her to stay. Ariety tells him that she wants Sho to leave her family alone and it's dangerous for them to be seen by any human being. Sho says that he envies her for having a family and tells her that he never sees his dad and his mom is always busy. While Ariety and Sho are talking, a crow attacks her and ends up getting stuck in Sho's window. Sho saves Ariety from the crow and the two become friends. 
Arietti's father intercepts her on her return. When Pod and Homily realize they've been discovered, they decide the family must leave the house as soon as possible. Meanwhile, at Sho's house he asks his aunt about the little dollhouse in his room. Sadako tells him that the dollhouse belongs to his mother and that his grandfather had it made from England for the little people. She tells him that it was a gift for little people but neither his grandfather or his mother saw them in their lifetime. Haru, the housemaid asks Sho if he has seen any little people around but Sho tells her that he has NT to keep Arietti's secret. Pod returns from a borrowing mission injured, thanks to Spiller, a borrower boy he met on the way. Spiller suggests some locations for the borrowers to relocate to, and Pod goes to check them out after he recovers. Sadako informs Sho that his ancestors saw borrowers in this house and had the dollhouse built specifically for the borrowers, complete with working electric lights and ovens. The borrowers, however, had not been seen since, and the dollhouse was placed in Sho's room. While Arietti is checking on her father, she inquires as to why they must relocate, and he responds that if a borrow is seen by a human, they will want to learn more about them. Pod then goes on to tell her that this house had two other borrower families before she was born, the first of which vanished without a trace and the second of which moved out because they were seen by humans. Meanwhile, Sho uncovers the floorboards above the borrower household, dismantles their kitchen, and replaces it with the dollhouse kitchen. A scream can be heard coming from the kitchen. Homily is surprised to see that their kitchen is being removed and replaced with a dollhouse kitchen. Ariety and Pod break through and are taken aback. As they pack, Pod tells them to take only what they need and not to take anything from the dollhouse. Ariety goes to say goodbye to Sho and informs him that she is a borrower. During their subsequent conversation, Sho theorizes that the borrowers are becoming extinct, which upsets Ariety. She tells him that Spiller knows there are more borrowers out there, and as long as they have each other to live for, they'll continue to leave. Sho apologizes and explains that he has had a heart condition since birth and will have surgery in a few days. The operation has a low chance of success. Meanwhile, Haru, Sadako's maid, notices that the floorboards have been disturbed. While Sadako is away, Haru locks Sho in his room, unearths the borrower's house, and places homily in a jar in the kitchen. Haru hires a pest control company to smoke out the borrowers and bring them to her alive. When Arietti returns home to find Homily missing in their house in disarray, she seeks assistance from Sho. Arietti assists Sho in breaking out of his locked room, Sho then carries Arietti to the kitchen and distracts Hara while Arietti rescues Homily. Sadako returns shortly after the pest control company arrives and tells them to leave. Haru tries to convince Sadako that the borrowers exist, but Homily has escaped, and there is nothing beneath the floorboards. The borrowers have already left, and Sho has destroyed the remains. When Haru realizes her proof has escaped, she throws a fit in an attempt to convince the pest control company that she is not insane. Ariety and her family along with Spiller embarks on a journey to find her people. During their move, the borrowers stop for dinner, and Sho's cat notices Arietti, so the cat brings Sho to her. Giving her a sugar cube as a farewell gift, he informs her that the struggle for survival of the borrowers has given him hope that he will survive the operation, which will take place in two days. Arietti offers her hair clip to Sho in exchange. The borrowers then board a teapot that Spiller uses to navigate a river as it is being lowered. In the Disney dub, Sho says in a final monologue that he never saw Arietti again and came back to the house a year later, proving that the plan had worked. Hearing that things are vanishing from the homes of his neighbors makes him happy. The monologue is absent in the Japanese dub, and Sho just watches the sunrise in silence.